hope you're doing great. Try and get this. Let's get a little shade here. Um, I want to talk today about what's going on with S with Fitch downgrading uh, France. And I'm going to tell you what's going on behind the scenes. And the more people understand what's going on and why things are happening, because the narrative would make you think that Fitch is downgrading uh, France because of what's going on with the unrest and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to read a story, but then I'm going to explain some other things that I believe most people are not seeing and why you need to understand it and how it affects us in America. This is out of Zero Hedge. It's entitled Fitch Downgrades France to uh, AA minus cites civil unrest as risk for Macron's reform agenda. Now, <coughs> excuse me, everybody that, um, and again, good morning to everybody. If you don't have your coffee, jump on in with me. You know, um, everything's taken at, at, you know, surface level when it comes to eco economics, especially with 95, 98% of the retail or public uh, when they watch. And you don't realize that these, there's systems out there that have been weaponized uh, literally for your mind and for the way that other countries perceive other countries and how they do business, okay? But right now, France is obviously going through a lot of stuff. Uh, the, the pension system is going under reforms right now because quite frankly, it is a Ponzi scheme, just like the one in America. And there's just not enough money to fund it. So they want to extend out and cause you to work more, longer, harder, all of that stuff, right? Think about it. Think about that slave mentality. And that's what we need to break free from right now around the world. If you're listening to this, you need to start looking at the way you live your life as slavery. And that is what's scary. It says in the Bible that the, the borrower is slave to the lender. And that is so very, very true. And that's why in your personal life, we need to strive to be debt free and then use debt and we form a business and use debt and leverage inside of a business entity, which in and of itself, when run properly, you will be able to benefit financially and you'll be able to bless the world by hiring people, investing in other technologies, all kinds of things, okay? So we have to look at ourselves as, as slaves. And right now, that is how the people in France are feeling. If there's anyone for some reason on this channel right now watching this that's from France, please let us know down in the comment section. Let us know what's going on boots on the ground style. It says here, Macron's not so secret ambitions uh, for France to supplant AAA rated Germany as Europe's superpower took a nosedive on Friday when rating agency Fitch downgraded the Eurozone's second largest economy one notch to AA minus. With, now, with that being, that's with a stable outlook. Okay, so we'll get into that in a second. Late on Friday at night, over concerns at social unrest and political paralysis followed the pensions fight that will limit government's effort to improve public finances. Political deadlock and sometimes violent social movements pose a risk to Macron's reform agenda and could create pressures for a more explanation. Uh, it really, it's, it's going to do more uh, fiscal or policy reversal of previous reforms. Now, Fitch had rated France at AAA until July 13th when it downgraded it uh, to uh, double A minus uh, plus, and then double A in 2014. All right. So now think about this. 2013, 2014. That's when Fitch started to downgrade, right? And it's been sitting there ever since. And now they just downgraded it to double A minus. 2013, 2014 is when all of the craziness was happening in the eurozone, um, when cyprus and greece were getting hit and they were getting blamed for all their troubles but then there's little issues around the country and so s p fitch and these other credit rating agencies were downgrading i want you to understand this and this these dates prove it um <laughs> fitch is not in the business of downgrading ahead of time they're not they're not like here to warn you you may think they are is there a credit rating agency and other agencies uh, use them? Uh, lenders use them to determine should we be offering them money? And if we do, at, at what price, right? Thank you, uh, Solar Independent, for the super chat. So they use this. But here's the thing. They are always consistently late, right? Why? Because they want to have a perfect track record. So isn't it really cool to have a perfect track record? It's like a weatherman that only tells you the weather from three days prior. Um, so three days ago, it was sunny. Nailed it again. <laughs> and the next day it rained. I know. It's like I'm perfect. Well, that is literally what they are. Now, we are seeing something ahead of time happen. 
And I want people to realize what's going on behind the scenes. They are using the unrest as a reason to hit them politically. Why? The leader of France literally went over to China, boots on the ground, and started talking against the U.S. Money different ways. Um, talking about how the, he doesn't like the way the U.S. is doing business. You know, and I believe that you're going to see France uh, join BRICS. And what's ironic, I believe that uh, these credit rating agencies um, are pressured and coerced they, by the government, quite frankly. They're, they're held off in like during the Lehman Brothers crisis. You know, it was very, very late in the game when these credit agencies started to downgrade mortgage-backed security debt, uh, actual specific banks and stuff because the government not want the information out. Like right now, banks are literally collapsing. This is literally happening right now, but it takes a long time. Why? Because the truth uh, doesn't get out to you in, in a timely manner. That's what my job is to do, is try and get you the real truth out as soon as possible so you can make the best decisions, right? And that's why markets stay uh, irrational longer than you could stay solvent because it's the amount of information that you get. See, these wealthy people all around the world, billionaires, they have information at their fingertips. You do not. And that's very, very important to understand, right? And then through the coercive ways of advertising, you're usually sold a bill of goods that's worth total crap. And it was, it was uh, okayed by these credit rating agencies. So as France is over in China, the US is getting mad. What's one way they can hit them? Well, they hit them, it's an economic war. That's what we're in right now, all over the world. We don't have a shooting war right now. We have a straight up economic war. All right. And when that fails, they go, they take you to real war. All right. So now all of a sudden you're seeing this shot across the bow, Fitch downgrades. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see another uh, company like S&P or Moody's possibly come in and downgrade their debt as well. What does that do now? Now it takes their borrowing costs up a notch. It costs more money for them to borrow money. And you know that just like our government, all governments are insolvent and they're always borrowing money, right? At the cost of the taxpayer. Okay. So now what do you think is going to happen? Do you think France is going to back down? No, that's what the U S wants. No, what's going to probably more than likely happen is going to force France into China's arms even quicker. Why? Because what is going to happen next? And this is going to be in, in this kind of video, you know, with bricks and the title and S and P, you know, Fitch and all that stuff. It's not going to get a lot of airplay. But you guys are going to witness this happen because I'm going to make a call, which is you don't ever see anybody really do and be right a lot of times. And it's not because I know anything. I'm not that bright. It's because I've seen this happen multiple times over in other economic cycles, right? This is my third one now. First one was a dot com, was investing before that. Watch how governments interacted with retail investors, how retail investors um, were affected, but also how they um, reacted to the news right? Either a lack of news or once the real news came out, it just was crazy. Um, and then that, that, that real estate bubble, same thing. So now you've got a situation where we have literally a world power that is going to move into like, it's moving literally out of the Eurozone into China. China is going to offer, and this is the call that I'm making. I bet you within the next eight to 12 weeks, you're going to see China offer loans to France. And I don't think that's even going to necessarily uh, need another rating agency like Moody's and S&P to step in and downgrade their stuff as well. I don't think that China's even going to wait. I think they're going to literally offer them a lifeline being l cheap financing, funding, um, loans. Another thing that's really interesting to me is right now you are seeing the amount of Russian savings accounts that are actually denominated in yuan picking up very increase, very fast. And Russian citizens are being given the option if they want to hold their uh, savings in ru rupees or ruples, sorry, rubles <laughs> or uh, Chinese yuan. And you are seeing that increase and increase. And I'm telling you, there's, I think that you, the days of China devaluing its currency where everybody was like mocking them is over. China has now switched. The plan is in play where they need to make their, and they want to make their currency look so attractive, not only for bilateral, you know, uh, cross-border payments and, and uh, commerce like trade, but also as a store of value. So I think that you're going to see this shift magnify over the next six months. And that's why I believe that we just made a critical error 
and got Fitch to do that. I do not believe that Fitch did it on their own. And so I believe, and once France starts to really do some trade in the yuan, I think it is just the big domino and it's going to just knock over the next country in the Eurozone, thus leading to a greater collapse in your, the Euro. Another thing too, is I want you to remember that the banking system in Europe is it very serious, is having very serious problems. You know, the, the gorilla in the room is Deutsche Bank. I know we're talking about Credit Suisse, but it is Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is in so much trouble. It's been in trouble for literally a decade. Tons of lifelines. It is literally the too big to fail bank. But if you look at the policies that Germany's coming out with, you want to talk about moronic. Like, you I mean you watched how they dealt with you know all of this crap over the last three years, right? The the flu. But then to sit there and like you know shut off Nord Stream two because they didn't uh, you know uh, certify it, then literally to close down their nuke reactors. They want to be, and I think they're because they're so prideful and they're going to fall fast. Um, they're going to be in so much trouble that it's going to run right into Deutsche Bank. I think that their bank is literally funding a lot of really serious corrupt stuff. And you're going to see some bad stuff over there. And remember, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. The Euros, Europe's going to go first, their banking system. And when they go, we're going to have about eight weeks until it's all over. The, the concussion literally hits America um, and it'll be all over the news. Even though you're seeing our banks failing right now, I'm telling you, you're, when Europe goes, we got X amount of weeks, and I believe about eight weeks. There's actually a prophecy about that told, I want to say in 2009, 2010, somewhere around there. Um, so I think it's a really big thing to watch. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Let me know down below what you think if this is a weaponized uh, uh, move, uh, Fitch downgrading France's debt. Because I think, I think it is, and I think you're going to see this blow up. And I think it's going to blow up in our face. It's going to blow up in Europe's face because it's going to lead France right into the hands of, of China and the Yuan. All right, guys, with that being said, I thank you so much for watching. The Economic Ninja is out. Oh, hey, thank you, Jesse, for the uh, super chat. See you.